The Lions have been one of the best drafting teams ever since Brad Holmes took over. One of the few day two picks that hadn't made much of an impact was Afatu Melifonwu, but in week 14, he took over for Tracy Walker as one of their starting safeties, and he's been arguably their most dynamic defensive playmaker since then. In the last three weeks, he has two pass breakups, an interception, three sacks, a forced fumble, and 10 defensive stops. He's just been flying around the field making plays, and he could be the spark that this defense needs heading into the playoffs. He gets the game-winning interception right here to clinch the NFC North. They've got these three crossing routes against deep zone coverage, really nowhere to go with the football. Nick Mullins throws a hilarious knuckleball. Melifonu steps right in front of it, gets the interception. Earlier in the game, they've got a high-low concept with the tight end out in the flat. Justin Jefferson fakes inside and then breaks out to the corner. Melifonu just triggers on this route immediately, lays a hit, forces the ball out. I'm going to show his athletic testing from the combine. He was a cornerback when he played at Syracuse, but these percentile numbers are based on NFL safeties, and you can see he's got elite numbers in all of the explosiveness drills, so 10-yard split, vertical jump, broad jump, and that really translates to his acceleration, his ability to break on routes quickly. Tracy Walker's a solid athlete, but Melifonwu just gives you so much more upside and margin for error. You go back to the Denver game, you can really see the elite movement skills. They've got Cortland Sutton releasing vertically, and then he's going to widen out out, and then the tight end comes behind him and attacks the seam. Initially, Melifonwu's responsibility is to carry Sutton vertically, but he's able to read this concept with his peripheral vision, flip his hips at full speed, work back over to the middle of the field, and then he does a great job playing the ball at the catch point. Once it hits Lucas Kroll's hands, he just splits him down the middle, forces the ball out. I mentioned margin for error. This is a really good example of that. As we'll get into, Melifonwu is really aggressive playing the run, and teams can take advantage of you having your eyes in the backfield with play action leak concepts, especially in the red zone. So right here, they fake the misdirection run. Melifonu has his eyes in the backfield. Brandon Johnson leaks out behind him, but he has the recovery speed to work back to the corner of the end zone, push him out of bounds. So the athleticism's great in the sense that it allows him to make more plays, but it also helps him to prevent big plays from the offense. And then as someone that played cornerback in college, he's a lot better in those situations than most safeties are gonna be. It's a mismatch when he's lined up on a tight end and he can hold his own against receivers better than you would expect. They're using him in so many different roles, but having that guy that you can trust in man coverage on third down is really valuable. He did give up a touchdown in week 15. He's got this receiver lined up as the H-back. He's playing with outside leverage against an in-breaking route. The coverage here is pretty good. The ball placement is just better. You can see him trying to rake the ball out here. It's just a little bit too far outside and the receiver makes a nice catch. But other than that, he's been playing really tight coverage. They're using him a lot to bracket a team's number one. They were doing that a few times against Justin Jefferson, and it's just a good matchup weapon to have in your secondary. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, and also follow us on all of our social medias. The links to those are in the description. But where he's actually made the most impact has been as a pass rusher. In the last three weeks, he has eight pass rushing snaps, and he's turned that into five pressures and three sacks. Right here, the Vikings are sliding their protection towards this four-man rush to the right. That leaves Ty Chandler one-on-one -on -one with Melifonwu. He beats the block easily, forces the fumble, the lines recover. This is where you really see his length come into play, how he can just disengage from running backs and pass pro. And then his second sack from week 16, again, you see Ty Chandler just completely lost in pass pro. I've always been a big fan of him as a runner, but if you're wondering why it took so long for him to get playing time over Alexander Madison, this is probably why. Melifonwu just runs unblocked into the backfield, gets from point A to point B in the blink of an eye and sacks Nick Mullins. Week 15, the Broncos are running a play action bootleg where Russell Wilson's rolling out to the right. Melifonu comes screaming off the edge against the rollout, forces the fumble. Isaiah Bugs picks it up and runs for a few yards. And then this play, just a pressure, but still as impressive to me. He's lined up at basically deep safety, 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. And normally a safety blitz from that depth isn't going to get quick pressure, but you can just see he's moving at a different speed than anyone else on the field. He forces Russell Wilson to break the pocket. He's got Jerry Judy open on the sideline, but Melifonu has the closing speed to hit the quarterback and force an inaccurate pass. And then you watch this guy defend the run. It's so impressive. He just throws himself into blocks. If you're a receiver trying to dig out a safety, you're probably used to someone that's not going to put up that much resistance. But if it's a Fatu Melifanu, you got to be fully locked in. He can actually shed blocks. He does a great job with his hands of ripping underneath. He's willing to go in and just blow up a puller. And overall, he's just added so much value to the Lions run defense. Right here against the Bears, it's fourth and one. They run a toss to DJ Moore. Melifanu reads the play 
place, squares up. He gets trucked, but he does just enough to hold them short of the sticks. And if you go back and watch his tape from early in the season, it makes sense why the Lions were confident putting him in the lineup. He played meaningful snaps in week three and four. Against the Falcons in week three, he blew up this slip screen, and then he made a great play defending this dagger concept, just laid a huge hit on the dig route and got a pass breakup. Same thing against the Packers in week four. He had a really nice hit on this flat route from zone coverage. And in those two games, he allowed a total of two receptions for eight yards. And then watching him on special teams, the Thanksgiving game in week 12, he was on kick return laying pancakes. He had the key block that led the way for a nice return. So he hasn't played a ton of snaps, but really every time they put him on the field in any phase, he's been a high level contributor. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.